So, for obvious reasons, our dinosaur of the day is the Diplodocus. It lived in the late Jurassic, which was a, roughly 148 to 155 million years ago when Diplodocus was around. Diplodocus's name means double bean. Uh, it may have lived as long as 50 to 80 years. It's also one of the most slender dinosaurs, um, as in actually the bumper book of dinosaurs points out, much more slender than the Apatosaurus. So the lighter weight that we mentioned and the skinny um, skinniness of the dinosaur as compared to other sauropods may have allowed it to go on two legs. It may have been able to rear up on its hind legs like a horse or something. But that's also a bit controversial because it's obviously pretty difficult to do that kind of thing. The juveniles might have been able to do it because juvenile apatosaurus could run on two legs because yeah, <laughs> they could run faster away from predators. That's cute. Diplodocus is also one of the most uh, on-displayed dinosaurs in the world, on display in the most museums. Yeah, part of that's due to the fact that there are actually a fairly large number of Diplodocus fossils that have been found as compared to some of the other sauropods. There are some sauropods that we'll talk about in later episodes where they only have found, you know, one or two bones and we're trying to guess the size of the dinosaur. In fact, um, Spinosaurus was that way for a long time. We had only seen a few bones. So when the when Jurassic Park 3 came out, they were mostly still guessing back then about what the size of the dinosaur was and what it looked like. It wasn't until uh, late 2014 that the studies came out really, where they had more evidence to suggest that it spent a lot of time in water and, and a few other things that were only guesses before. So I realize that we haven't done a quick outline of the biological classification system. A lot of people remember the mnemonic devices from high school about the kingdoms and all that. So I just want to go through them real quick. So you've got at the highest level, you have the family tree of life and you go into the domains and then you go into the kingdoms. Everyone talks about the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. Um, then you have phylums, you have classes, which are sometimes called clads, orders, then you have families and families, especially in, I see a lot in dinosaurs, they'll break down into subfamilies or other um, subgroups of the family. Then you have the genus and then finally you have the species. So in Diplodocus's case, it's in the order of sauropods and the super family of Diplodocoidea and the family is Diplodocidae. So inside the family, there's the Dipl Diplodocus, the Supersaurus, and a few other dinosaurs, which are, are considered some of the longest things to have ever lived, especially on land. Several of them have been found over 100 feet long, and actually the Diplodocus was considered the longest dinosaur for quite a while until longer dinosaurs were eventually discovered. Probably one of the coolest things about Diplodocus is its whip tail. Um, scientists think that it may have been able to break the sound barrier. Actually, a paleontologist who came up with that theory is uh, Phil Curry, who we have an interview with in a later podcast episode. The tail could have made a bullwhip sound to either scare predators or could have been used for courtship purposes. Yeah, it also reminds me of my favorite dinosaur, which is the Ankylosaurus, who had a big club on the end of his tail. So the idea of dinosaurs kind of lumbering and moving slowly, they actually had quite the fierce tails in some cases. There might have been a lot more mo movement and quick action. Imagining a tail breaking the sound barrier is pretty impressive. In 1990 in Wyoming, they actually found a Diplodocus fossilized skin impression. Um, which showed that the tail had a row of spines that may have run all the way up the vertebrae to the neck. This was made of keratin, which is the same thing you know, as our hair and fingernails, so that's why it's pretty hard to find. Yeah, that would be considered soft tissue, like we were talking about, where you can't really tell exactly what a dinosaur looked like, 
because unless you get an impression or something, you never really know what could have been out there. Diplodocus had different teeth from other kinds of plant-eating dinosaurs. It had teeth that could strip leaves off instead of biting leaves in clumps. So you imagine the dinosaur chomping down in the middle of a branch and then running its mouth out to the edge and stripping all the leaves off at once. So because its teeth were made for stripping, not necessarily chewing, it also had to swallow stones to help digest its food. It also had the ability to regrow teeth quickly, kind of like a shark, you know, with all that biting on bark and sliding your mouth down the branch, you're going to wear out your teeth pretty quickly. So it needed new teeth. And there's some controversy about how flexible its neck was. Some people think that its neck was so flexible that it could get really high elevation branches and low level things and all in between. Other people think its neck may not have been that flexible, so it may have had to move its whole body from side to side like some of the other sauropods did. And I think one of the most interesting theories is that part of the reason its forelegs are so much different than its hind legs is that it could have been eating aquatic plants where it would stick its head underwater or at least graze the surface of the water and chew up plants from that position. But in either case, it was eating plants most likely that other sauropods weren't eating, so it didn't have too much competition for its food. We're not sure yet how Diplodocus laid eggs without them breaking. They may have built soft nests out of vegetation, or they may have squatted down, but there's also a theory that they'd have a a tube of soft tissue-like muscles that could pass the egg down on its way to the ground at a slow enough rate that it would hit the ground softly, but there's no soft tissue remains that we found anyway to support this theory. We also don't know too much about how it took care of its young, whether it kind of left them on their own to survive or uh, kind of protected them until they grew big enough to not be a food source for Allosaurus and other carnivores at that time. Uh, Just a few other facts about Diplodocus. Its front limbs were shorter than its hind limbs. Most Diplodocus museum displays are gifts from Andrew Carnegie. He donated a a lot of casts to different European monarchs. Uh, Paleontologists used to think that Diplodocus had a second brain, but they figured out later that it was just an enlargement in the spinal cord in the hip area. Uh, But this enlargement was actually bigger than the Diplodocus' brain. Hmm. And Diplodocus had five-toed feet, very similar to elephants, but it's got a uh, thumb claw on one of the toes on each foot that it probably used for protection. 